Well, I'm sitting here wondering if I should even do it, but in the name of science and all the love that is guns, we are. So some of you may recognize the numbers on that mold. Goes to one of the mightiest revolvers ever made. Designed by Elmer Keith. The mold is the 429-421 semi-wad cutter, but this one's got a little special to it. It's got a hollow point. And so I always have cast these pretty hard, like almost a 15 Brunel. And I just cast up five pounds at 30 to one. Yeah, that's a lot softer. It's either gonna do one of two things. It's gonna be really impressive or really messy. We're gonna go full snot load with 2,400 and we'll get it over the chronograph. We'll see what it does. My guess is as good as yours. Leave a comment below. What do you think it's gonna do? After the sizer debacle, and if you saw my video the other day, you know what I had to do. Just getting finished sizing my 44s for reloading. My brass is all polished up, ready to go. I've got my dies. We're gonna get this going, give you some pro tips hopefully along the way, and we'll go from there. Well, I went ahead and got a couple cylinders full of match brass. I use Starline or Remington, and I wanted to talk about one thing because I'm gonna have to edit this for YouTube for um, the content. The community content guidelines say that we can't show exactly how we load. But I do want to share a couple things with you. I've got my sizer die um, already set, or excuse me, this is my crimp die. And I want to show you a neat little trick that I started using years ago. So my crimp is set and I usually lock my dies in. And what I do is I take a flat washer and I put it underneath my crimp so it won't crimp because I like to seat and then crimp with lead. And then I back my sizer out. I always have a dummy in here. And so my dummy stays in my box along with that flat washer. I'm gonna back this way out. It's not gonna crimp because I picked the die up and then I'm going to screw the top of the sizer down to the bullet, make it snug and tighten it down And now when I actually seat my bullets, they will all seat to the same depth. From there, I'll take my die out, take my flat washer out, screw my stem way out, cinch the die back down so my crimp die is all the way down on the press, and then I can crimp from there. That's how I do it. Well, here we are out at the range, and I have some predictions prior to me sh shooting this. First of all, I think we're gonna be somewhere in the neighborhood of upper 13s, lower 14s, which with a 30 to one, that's really, really, really pushing limits. I didn't even bother to boil down the ballistic gel because I think I'm about to ruin it. If you saw what we did in the last ballistic test I did with the 45 ACP, it made it all the way to the back of the block. This is, was the same lead, we lost a pedal, I don't even know if we're gonna be able to stop it. I have four milk jugs behind the ballistic gel there. My other theory is I don't know if I'm gonna have any acceptable accuracy. That's why I've backed it up to 25 yards. This gun is very capable of holding a one inch group at 100 yards. But because I'm not really gonna change my alloy to this, I'm gonna go back to my normal um, clip on wheel weights, 50-50. Um, there's no sense me spending a lot of time zeroing and redoing. So we're about to take a shot, see if we can even stop it. I think we're about to lose the ballistic gel, but that's okay because I have some new clear ballistic gel that I'm about to mix up here when I get this done and get my range cleaned up, I've got a feeling. Let's see what it does though. Maybe I can hit it, maybe I can't, we'll see. My guess is 1400 feet per second. Let's see.
<laughs> uh, definitely made it through the gel. Blew the gel off the table. I think I see all four milk jugs leaking, so I don't even know if we stopped it. We'll go down there and see. Yeah. Wow. Let's go see what we did. Figured as we're walking down there, I don't know if we got one in a jug or not. We definitely lost the ballistic gel. We'll check that out first. Oof. Yeah, absolutely destroyed. And that was about what I had anticipated. Just, goodness gracious. That's a little extreme. I'm looking at the jugs. I don't think we caught a bullet. I think we had a fragment that went through. I'll tell you what, it hit it with so much force that it moved that con or the uh, stepper stone up into the other one and broke it. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna have a bullet, guys. There's a part of a bullet right there, a fragment. I think it just absolutely disintegrated. And that was really about what I had anticipated. So 30 to one is a little soft for a 44 mag. We hit it. I don't see any fragments in these other jugs. I'll dig them out in a little while and maybe I'll find a piece. Can't wait to see that in slow motion. That should be pretty impressive. Well guys, I hope you learned something today. I know that I have. I won't be firing 30 to one out of my 44. It might be just a little bit overkill and that's about what I anticipated. So till we see you next time, if you like these videos, please make sure you check out my other videos. Please make sure that you like and subscribe. We'll see you again.